Welcome back to another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. I am here with Amanda Bucci, and I've been like, it's so funny. Every time I get on with somebody, I'm always like, how do I, what's like, what's the most genuine way for me to welcome this person? And I've just been thinking, I want to just say this, Amanda fucking Bucci, how are you? That is, just, <laughs> that is literally what has been popping up. Oh, Amanda yeah. fucking Bucci, how are you, first of all? And thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I so appreciate you. You're the best. I'm just glad to be here with you, to be honest. I'm hella awkward always on this podcast because it's like every single person that I bring on, I have some sort of personal relationship with everyone that I bring on. For you specifically, and I want everyone hearing this, If I, I'm, I'm assuming, Amanda, you still do VIP days. Um, I hired you for a VIP day. I believe it was during the pandemic. I think it was, yeah, it was like 2020 or 2021. Um, and I remember I'd been following you for a while, your content. And what I really loved is just how you spoke to the energetics when you spoke to the words that we use. And it wasn't, it had nothing to do with strategy though. I, re I don't remember what the post was that made me just like reach out to you, but it definitely made me feel like there were things about my insides that needed my attention. Um, and that's why I felt safe with you when I hired you for a VIP day because it's like, oh, she'll get me, she'll see me. And what we ended up walking away with was a brand new sales page for at the time, it was my Real Rich membership community, which is no longer a thing. But I just remember feeling like, okay, I'm not crazy for having all these different ideas and you were able to just hold space for that. And we walked away, I walked away with a great sales page. And then since then, I've been watching your evolution and I just wanna say, there's nothing that you've written in the past year and a half, two years that has not like pierced me on such a beautiful level. Like uh, I've felt so alone these past two years in my entrepreneurial journey. And I know you have too, because you're very open about it, not just alone, but confused, scattered, feeling like, what am I even doing here? Just imposter stuff. So I would, um, I want to start off with something that you wrote recently, and then we can take it from there. Sounds good. Perfect. Perfect. You wrote, um, there are a group of people right now who are coming to terms with how magical they are. That's the first thing. And then the second thing that you wrote was with every expansion, ah, uh, comes a contraction. And I have felt so contracted for the past, what feels like two years. And I'm finally feeling that expansion. And I know you are too, because I've been watching every, you've been, you've been saying it out loud but we don't know what's been going on internally. So I would love for you to share what's going on because I know somebody listening will be like, oh my God, yes, she sees me. So I'd love to hear that from you. Yay. Well, first and foremost, thank you so much for all of that. It's just so nice to know that there's someone out there. And I know there's a lot of people, but you're so active about it. And I think that's <laughs> one of the most loving things you can do with someone is say like, hey, I love you for all these reasons and you impact me for all these reasons. It's so loving and you're so generous with your love. Thank so you. I just so appreciate you. Thank you. And it's, it's, it's just also nice to know that, you know, you resonate with what I've been saying because there is a particular group of people that are experiencing this kind of confusion. And I would love to just speak to that if you yes. feel, have felt scattered or anxious or hopeless or confused in your entrepreneurial journey but you've also been going through a spiritual awakening and you've been coming to terms with whether it's your spiritual gifts or more of your, your purpose as a person here in the world, there is, you know, so much to kind of speak into about what that journey is really like. And the reason that I wrote the expansion and contraction things, because I feel like I've expanded so much over mm -hmm. the last couple of years, you know, like I, worked on and really healed so many things inside of myself through re, through my relationship for my for all of 21 2021 I worked with a somatic therapist and I spent that whole year working on my relational self the part mm -hmm. of me that is in connection to other people the part of me that plays into a dynamic with someone that could be you know perpetuating a subconscious pattern that I don't want to keep anymore. Mm -hmm. And one of the coolest things about healing is that the, the more difficult emotions and feelings and triggers and challenges are really the portals and like the, the answers to how to get to the next level, so to speak. I wrote mm -hmm. something this morning where I was like, wow, getting to a place of gratitude, but first feeling anger, yeah. you gotta just let that anger exist. Like, allow for your anger or allow for your emotion 
to have its fucking moment, you know, like have your have your actual emotion and be able to move through it and feel it and acknowledge it and let it be in the room and have it say its thing. And then you can you can move into the next kind of space. So <laughs> on a on a journey level on that kind of confusion in business and figuring out purpose stuff al along with the spiritual journey, the dynamic and the thread that I really see is is this growing and having healing opportunities and really working on yourself you are letting go of old frequencies and old patterns that you don't need anymore and your whole energetic system is expanding and it's lightening and the frequency is raising mm -hmm. the response to that mm -hmm. often internally is that any other dark or egoic or mm -hmm protection pattern that still lives within you within that pattern will cling a little bit harder it will not want to be let go yeah, right mm -hmm. so if you're feeling like oh why am i having these really amazing moments but also these really hard ones it's because you're you're the universe is trying to balance itself out your system is trying to balance itself out right that's why that's why change and healing isn't easy it doesn't actually just you can't just, you know, heal something and then it's gone and everything's better or like solve a problem and figure it out and fix it and then not have to also navigate some resistance. Anything that you go through, any healing that you're experiencing or any kind of upgrade that you want to make, whether it's I want to, you know, do acting and I want to <laughs> be a comedian and I want to write a book or yeah. I want to start a podcast or, you know, I want to be this bigger version of myself. There's going to be resistances no doubt about it but you got to work with them directly and you got to figure out what's there and you got to see yourself and it's really about doing like shadow work and light work at the same time you know what you just said gave so much freedom because you said um you know anytime you're expanding and please correct me if i'm wrong anytime you're expanding you know there's going to be a part of you that clings harder and when you said you, you, it's, it's almost in a way to balance you out you know that that is probably the, like yeah. the most beautifully said thing i think i've ever heard it and it just gave me so much peace because i was in therapy today um and we were talking about getting to a place of gratitude and also there is this um voice inside of me i'm gonna call it the belittler voice mm -hmm. it's the no matter what i do no matter what i do you could have done it better Voss. you could have done it better and my therapist and i were he asked me like really what is it that this voice is so afraid of i go it doesn't want me to fuck up again like i have fucked up my life that's how i see it oh i fucked up my life i've done the rehab the thing the this whatever you know upset my family and so this belittler voice as i'm expanding inside like i'm allowing myself to feel more sensation internally and but that belittler voice comes in it's like wait a minute don't fuck it up don't fuck it up and it's just and so that's one piece so that just gave me such peace like oh it's just it's just my my way of creating some sort of homeostasis inside of me because yeah. you know how it feels when you have that expansion it your body can't literally be it be with it it's so sensate it, there's so much sensation inside of you so yeah. that was really helpful what you just said and the second thing that you said is you know to get to gratitude you got to first acknowledge the anger and you know, that made me think of today in therapy. I, uh, you know, I cry and scream every session. And I realized today, <laughs> here I am, you know, leaning into voiceover work and acting and writing and no longer being the person that's helping people achieve their dreams. I'm now the person that's achieving my own dreams. And what I haven't acknowledged for you, you said you were talking about anger. Um, I haven't acknowledged how hard the past 10 years of my life have been. Like it's been... Mm because I did not want to feel like a victim. If I acknowledge how fucking hard it's been since the time I've gotten got divorced in my early 30s and everything in the past 10 years, my portion of my adult trauma was right here in Austin for the past 10 years. It's a lot. So I've been running from me. Like my feet have been still, but I've been running. So yeah. I would just love to hear from you. What have you been doing? What have you been recommending with your clients in terms of being with that expansiveness and I mean, like, he healing healing and growing at the same time it seems kind of weird you just saying that yeah, but you know is, what i mean it is it is it is a strange thing yeah. it, you know it contradicts so much of what we think is true like if we even just what you just said about if i acknowledge how hard things have been then 
maybe that means that I'm in victim mentality. Mm -hmm. Or if I let myself feel anger, maybe I'll hurt somebody. Right. Or, or yeah, be, be a victim or, or whatever. But mm -hmm. the thing that I've learned about shadow work, which is really the, any, any of those parts where you're like, nope, I'm going to run from that part. Anything but that part, that part of me is cringy. I'm judging that part. And these are lessons that, you know, you got to learn on your own and you can hear them on a podcast, but right. if you've done them, they'll resonate with you. And then if you take this and remember it, you're going to go apply it to your life and, you know, tomorrow or a couple weeks from now or a couple months from now and be like, oh my God, that thing again that I learned months ago about shadow work, which is really that when you acknowledge any of those parts of yourself that you don't want to acknowledge, mm -hmm. then you can actually, and you embrace it you can actually allow it the space to exist. Mm -hmm. And then it's no longer having this hold on you. Mm -hmm. it, it, it has less of like an intense hold on you. Like you said that, you know, that little voice. And yeah. if, you pretend, if you're like, I hate that voice, I don't want it anymore. It's not going to go away because it just wants to be seen and heard. Mm -hmm. It wants to be accepted. It wants to be loved. And whether it's our victim mindset, you know, the other day, um, with my, my book, I was talking about, about writing my book. Mm -hmm. I was in the car with John and, you know, we went to Soho house to write. And then it was, there was a DJ there and I was like, fuck, I can't write here. And then we went <laughs> somewhere else and there was no laptops after 11 AM. And I was like, fuck now it's three o'clock. And I, in, I was trying to like be regulate my nervous system as much as possible. And I was like, you know what, John's helping me today. And I'm going to try to be really calm. And then I, in the car on the way home, I was like, can I just say the thing that I'm really annoyed about so I can let it go? Yeah. And he's like, hell yeah. The thing. And I was like, I am so, and then I started laughing in the middle of me saying this. Cause I was like, it sounds so silly, but I just have to say it. I am so annoyed at this day so far. And I am, I know we're going to sit down and work the rest of the day, but I just want to say how fucking annoyed I am. I should have listened to myself, blah, 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 blah. And then I let it go. Yeah. And then it no longer had a hold on me. And we, so you hashtag said it out loud. Yes, I did so say it out loud. I'm always going to say that. So you said it out loud. You said it out loud. Okay, got it. Okay. I did, in fact, say it out loud. Yeah. And, I mean, it's good because you don't keep it in. You don't hold it in. Yeah. And if you can not hold parts of yourself in, whether mm -hmm. that's like the extremely vulnerable part or the, you know, the one that feels like an imposter or the one that feels like it's messing up, I am sure in your experience in the last couple of years and mine too, just embracing the fact that like, oh, I don't have the answers right now. That's pretty vulnerable because I feel like I always have the answers. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody comes to me for answers and I don't have them right now. And that's, that's, that's yeah. hard. It's, but that is what gets you through the, the holds that that pattern has on you. So this actually is a really great time. I, I was going to share this in my stories, but I'm going to share this. Um, I'll share this now too. My therapist actually asked me to ask my belittler part of me three questions. So I'll probably take an edible tonight, soak in and talk. To so I have these three questions and I want everyone hearing these. Please write these down. I'll put these in the show notes is what are you afraid of more than anything in the world? So when I talk to the belittler voice of me, this belittling the one that's like, you could have done better, Voss, or don't fuck it up. It just, it's so afraid of me fucking up my life. It is yeah. so afraid of upsetting my family, disappointing my family, being a shame in the Indian community, all these things. Number, so what are you afraid of more than anything in the world? I'm going to do this deeper with myself. I just want to yeah. say these questions for y'all. Um, what do you want more than anything in the world off the top of the dome? What my belittling self wants more than anything is to feel that feeling of like creation in my love life, in my financial life, in my creative side. It just wants to be like, I did it. I did it. Look, look guys, I did it. Right. And whoever I'm talking to. And then yeah. the, the third question is, where did you learn to be this way? And that's not in a judgy way, but it's like, wow, belittler voice. Like, where did you come from? Like, how did you learn to become this way? Um, what's the job or role that you're playing? And so I have absolutely with that pessimistic belittling side of me definitely been like stop like I just compartment I compartmentalize that voice and I just keep trucking along but it's catching up to me it's catching up to me because I have you know my property in Mexico is going to be ready this is I've been waiting a year over a year for this and it's like yeah. my place I get to do this I created this and 
that voice is like, yeah, but you, you know, you still owe your mom money. You know, your mom helped you out with it. You're not that great. Like I, that's the voice that I have. It's no matter what I do, it's still never good enough. So we're going to, we're going to have to talk to that part of myself because it's been, it's been hindering me. I can feel it. I can feel Mm -hmm. it. And it's like it gets louder the more good things that you create in your life too yes. because it just wants to double check and make sure that you know it's 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 almost like in opposition to the good things that you have in your life because it's a protector mm-hmm. and the the cool thing to remember about the way that your your psyche works is that mm-hmm. you don't have to exist as your protective parts they're they're there to serve a purpose but they don't have to be running the show Mm-hmm. But it ta- it does take, but they're really, you know, they're really well-trained. Mm-hmm. I like to think about them as, you know, with big muscles and they're really well-trained yeah. and they know what to do. And their pattern is, is very mm-hmm. well-grooved in your brain. And the new thing that you're creating, the new identity, the new pattern, the new way of thinking or being or feeling, whether that's feeling more joy or bliss or expansion or gratitude, or love, or pleasure, Mm -hmm. or money, or whatever that is, is really in opposition to your protective parts. So it's that balance again of the light work and the shadow work where you look at your protective parts, your belittler, your inner voices that say you can't do it, or I'm afraid, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I love you. I am, I know that you've been here for a really, really, really long time Mm -hmm. and I'm not going to be mean Mm -hmm. to you, but I'm going to keep doing new things over here. I'm going to acknowledge that you exist and that you have a voice and that you matter. And I'm going to call out what your purpose is and say, your purpose is to protect me. Mm -hmm. And I recognize that. And let's redirect this energy. And I am protecting myself in these other ways. I am creating boundaries. I'm creating structure. I'm creating guidelines for myself. You know, I have support systems around me to protect me. I can protect myself. Got it. And then once you do that, and then you keep going into the the edge of expansion, and you're like, all right, how can I anchor in this expansion even more? That's the Mm -hmm. light work side of it, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, how can I keep practicing my gratitude and keep anchoring in this new identity and this new pattern? How can I you know, keep being open to receiving and anchoring in the feeling of receptivity and openness in my body. What can I do? Can I, you know, say a prayer or do a ritual for the receptivity, just like you do for the podcast? That's like an, like an anchor. Mm -hmm. It's a really beautiful representation of the version of yourself that you want to keep embodying. You know what you just said about it being protective. Um, I loved that. And by the way, everyone, I just, I, I, don't, I don't even know if y'all notice this, but like you were just literally doing multiple different personalities here, right? So it was like yes. the healer talking to the the belittler side, like one part of you talk. I mean, y'all, I know yeah. I, I feel seen right now by you because when I talk about talking to the parts of yourself, this is what I mean is literally that voice yes. dialogue. And um, this is my, this is what we do in therapy. So I, I drew out all my different archetypes uh, yeah. what do you say vampire yeah yeah oh yeah vampire and thief is definitely an archetype yeah and cool. we looked at what happens when i when when that voice takes over how do i replenish myself what am i and and i realize i've had some unhealthy coping mechanisms to replenish this belittler side of me once i belittle i'm drained and so we're working on healthier coping skills awesome thank you and Um, What I really loved is how you were able to just kind of break it down to talk to that part of ourself. That's really what it is. And I know that you have other tools that you use, which we will touch on. Um, Like, what do you personally, Amanda Bucci, do? Um, Because you're, when I look at you, I see someone who is so grounded, so calm. And I really, one one of the things that I respect more than anything about you, other than your writing, and your your writing is phenomenal, it's poetic, it's prolific, is um, I really love your boundaries. I love you. I love that you have that kind of boundaries that you have. And I've actually like I, I've seen some of your boundaries and how you talk about it. And I'm like, yes, I can have that for me. Why can't I have that for me? I can have that. So and I love that you are very um, and when I say protective of your energy, I don't mean that you're like you're not hardened. You don't have a wall, but you are protective of your energy. And I love that yeah. for you. Uh, so I just yeah, want to, is there anything you want to say about that? Thank you. 
Yes, definitely. Um, <laughs> just to close the loop on the, the speaking to different parts of yourself, if yes. anyone wants to look into that further, yeah. it's called it's called parts work or internal mm -hmm. family systems. And it's a, yeah. one of my most favorite systems that I've ever learned. I learned it in my spiritual psychology program and we practiced it a lot. And you can speak to any part of yourself. There was a time that I did a session in my program and I embodied God and yeah. I channeled the energy of God just by setting the intention that that is the, the place from which I will speak. And you can that. do that with your inner child. You can do that with your inner rebel. You can do that with your inner victim. You can do it speaking to someone that you trust. You can do mm -hmm. it in a journal. You can do it with yourself. And it's just one of the most beautiful things. And um, I, it's just one of my favorite tools to understand yourself. So if anyone wants that, that's great. Um, and yeah, going back to the boundaries thing, thank you for saying that. I yeah. appreciate that. And it is a learned skill and going back to the homeostasis conversation, mm -hmm. the reason that I have really strong boundaries with myself and with other people now, and I feel very clear on them is because the more I healed, the more soft and sensitive I became mm -hmm. and the more empathic I became and the more that I can just sense a lot of energies around me and the more that I open myself up to you know the truth of my heart and my soul I learned if I am going to continue being this soft and open I also I need a hell of a lot of fucking strength I need to be incredibly clear with what is a yes and what is a no or else I will drain my energy and I won't be able to do the things that I need to do and it's not an angry or a frustrated thing with anybody. It's more of just like, hey, this is what I'm available for. This is what I'm not available for. And I have in the past been very resentful and frustrated, but that's often because I had boundaries inside of me that I didn't set or enforce. And I felt really tired and drained as a result. And there's definitely still times where I feel that and I keep learning that lesson because it's been a huge one for me as a recovering people pleaser. That's like my core um, energetic dynamic in my life where I did not know what boundaries were and I didn't know where I started and other people began mm -hmm. before I had a spiritual awakening. So yeah. um, in my in my practices with myself, the you know whether it was reaching a state of burnout and needing to really pull back or opening up my spiritual gifts and realizing that if I'm gonna be this open and this in touch with my intuition and this sensitive and you know this connected and, um, this loving, then that's like a, a nice, soft, juicy energy. But I do need clear yeses and clear noes in my life, whether that is like, I will not allow for, you know, this type of dynamic in a relationship or like, I'm not available for this level of emotional labor that I could do with someone because it's going to take a lot out of me. Or, you know, I am available for this with you because we have so much trust together. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that are most close to me, I'm like my clients and my friends, I am mm -hmm. available for their darkest stuff mm -hmm. and their most difficult parts of themselves. Because number one, I've met myself there with compassion mm -hmm. and I know how to meet another person there with compassion and, and the most beautiful love. Mm -hmm. And also I'm not spreading my energy so thin in different areas to the point where I don't have anything to give. So if I'm going to be able to give at big levels, I need to be able to protect my energy at big levels. I feel that from you. I, I know this about you. Uh, I, just in our interactions in the DMs, I know that you don't typically respond back right away. And I love that. And I, I love that. Like, you know, yeah, even... Yeah. Yeah, no, and I and I love that. And I was like, and that's given me permission. I don't have to respond back right away. That's that. That's my that's my own tendency to lean towards my anxiety. I have to be the first one to I just got to be on top of it when actually I'm the kind of person that like I could let something go for five days and not give a fuck. But I don't allow myself to be that. But I in watching you and in so, so many of my colleagues who are have such excellent boundaries. Thank God for my my female friends in my life who have shown yeah. me as well. It's OK, Voss. You yeah. don't have to be on point all the time. Um, I just appreciate you. And I think you're actually you're very soft. I actually love your soft your, your softness. And I feel that. Um, a lot through your writing and even when we're DMing. I want to talk about, um, my God, I really want to talk about this. Um, you shared in your caption, I, I don't remember which post, but it was your lowest revenue. This yeah. year was your lowest revenue year. Yeah. Can we please go into that? Yes. 
Let's do it. That is the reason why I was like, I got to have Amanda on the podcast because that was my, this was, that was my year two things that I didn't want yeah. burned down. So much of my shame around money being like, oh, you're 40. You should be farther along. Oh, you're an Ivy league graduate. You should be farther along. Mm -hmm. You should, you, you know, so I Definitely. would love to hear from you what that was like, how you moved through it, where you are today. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I'm so excited yeah. to talk about it because there's there's so much beautiful stuff in there. And again, everything that we've set the context for so far in this conversation is all of the energy that is going to be brought into not only this story, but also what it represents for other people yeah. in their own work with themselves and with money and with purpose. Mm -hmm. And I know this is true for you too, because we're, you know, we're in the same timeline of like writing a book and, yeah. you know, doing doing different things. So the feeling that I got Wait, last year. I yes, just want, I want to interrupt you one second. I want to, I want to just highlight the reason why I appreciated you, you so much. See, so I think a lot of people in the coaching industry think, oh, you hire a coach. They need to have all their shit together. It, and I'm not saying your shit wasn't together, but we place people on pedestals and yeah. you know, you have 465,000 followers. You've been all over the place. You've run these million dollar businesses. You've had all these things. And it was just so comforting for me to see that you were going through this. Like, I wasn't obviously happy that you were going through it, but I was, it was such a, like a, oh my God, like she's going through it. I felt, so I just want to say thank you because that's the kind of people that I love having on here. You're not willing, you're, you're, you're willing to share your shit. And I know yeah. you had to go through it first before you yes. maybe wrote about it. Yeah. So, um, okay, go ahead. I just yeah, want to thank acknowledge you. that. I, no, I, I appreciate that. And I think it's, an, it's really important. Um, uh, there's so many things that I think yeah. and all the things. So in the, you know, in the, in the coaching space or in the online entrepreneurship space, I think what is true about maybe someone that is doing really, really well in their company or their business mm -hmm. is they found a thing and they nailed it and mm -hmm. now they're expanding it and scaling it. But the thing in and of itself feels aligned and correct and you know like they're onto something and other people want it and they've really gotten to a place in their journey where they figured it out right that doesn't mean you can't close that loop and be like and i'm complete with that and let me figure out what my next thing is yeah but that's what that's what that's what i see and i think one of the misconceptions mm -hmm. is that we have to build one thing it's the same kind of patriarchal corporate structure -y, mm -hmm. like you pick one career and then that's what you do the rest of your life versus what might actually be true and what might be more authentic for a lot of people myself included yourself included mm -hmm. is to have like this trial and error experience of going hard and like really putting your all into something mm -hmm. and then feeling things shift in your experience and for me it was very much so like okay I'm ready to write a book now, but I'm spending, you know, 15 hours a week on coaching calls between one-on-one -on -one clients and my group program, and then hosting four events a year. And, you know, it's a lot. So if I'm going to focus on that, I will focus on that. But if I'm going to write a book and then I also started a second company, if mm -hmm. I'm going to do those two things, I need to really scale back. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, that's a contextual nugget right there about someone's journey that you don't always really put mm -hmm. into play based on you know when you're hiring a coach or when you're seeing people post about how much money they're making it's not better or worse it's just a different place in their journey mm -hmm. and i think that we also do this with our language and how we talk about like high level client low level mm -hmm. client or beginner versus veteran it's like th those things are kind of ending i feel because yeah. where someone's at in their journey is not necessarily dependent on you know how much money they are making right now they could have made millions of yeah. dollars and they are just starting something new right now and they have a lot of wisdom experience um or maybe they are just starting a business but they're a really like potent magical healer that has so much wisdom or, or whatever right like you mm -hmm. have it's different it's contextual mm -hmm. for everybody and i think that can get lost in translation Mm -hmm. um, and I also think that, you know, there's a culture of speaking about your accolades and your achievements and then mm -hmm. having that, you know, having your personal experience right now be a part of your marketing, especially if you're a coach, right? It's like, yeah. this is what's going on right now. And then if you're going through it, you're like, this is what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, my choice in doing that was very intentional. 
But what wasn't really intentional or what I didn't expect to happen <laughs> was, you know, I planned like, okay, I'll do two VIP days a month and I'll do this many clients, you know, whatever. I, I kind of expected being able to reach the capacity that I really needed to reach, but that didn't happen. Right. And unexpected twists and turns of feeling like I had to work a lot more hard to get the leads and the clients that I was hoping for. What I can see now, the lessons that I've learned from this experience, it, it was between February of this year and like, even, even now I'm still coming out. Mm -hmm. um, August and July were like the most difficult times. But what I really see on a um, energetic and spiritual level, I'm always kind of looking at the practical business. How can I fix this? How can I fix that? How can I upgrade this, optimize that, blah, blah, blah. That's great. But on a bird's eye view, like, what am I supposed to be doing right now? And am I doing it? And <laughs> Jesus. is yeah. there is there a deeper fuck? What am I missing? Yes. And <laughs> it's like, what in the literal fuck is happening? You know, That's why I wrote about the magical beings thing, because I know that everything else I've done this year has been like, hey, here's a spiritual gift. Here's, you know, deep wisdom that like you have learned why aren't you spending the time to really live it and share it and embody it why are you kind of locking yourself into this um familiar thing that you've done and st getting a little complacent with the way that you you know create and the way that you coach like you're bigger than this you're more than this mm -hmm. you're you know you you need to like bring in all of the lessons that you've learned and create from there but it's not going to be this like quick let me write a new sales page and fucking here I am. Yeah. It's yeah. not, it's no. not that it's a really intentional process of like letting, um, a lot of wisdom land and, and integrate into my system and to anybody else who's resonating with this as well. This is what's happening. Um, and it doesn't match with these typical expectations of how we're supposed to make money. Like mm -hmm. no one tells you that like, Hey, you can have your worst year yet. And it's still your best year yet yes right like because it was your best year internally because you you probably yes. did a lot. yes 100 percent, 100 percent. i i uh i don't know if i've actually shared this on the podcast and i have no problem i was waiting for the perfect time to share it and now it, it feels here yeah. <laughs> so it i would I, I would say you know i think the biggest um like whoa what the fuck is um you know in may in may as y'all know uh you know i was I was on the cover of the magazine, <laughs> yes. the but in, so in May, I was on the cover of the magazine in May, I turned 40 mm -hmm. and on May 3rd, two days after this cover came out, I had negative $365 in my checking account. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And I called up my friend and I said, what's happening? What, what is this all? What does this all mean? Why am I on the cover of a magazine? Why do I have negative 360? How did this happen? It's How did up. I? What would you say? It's fucked up, right? It's fucked up. It's, it's really fucked up. How do I have but a I get it. How, but, and, and that's, and, and I wanted to share that because I think I've shared this with maybe two clients privately, but you I've never. make this, this is time for a post. <laughs> yeah, it was. I'm excited. No, I will. I, I because I, you know, this is the, this is the exact thing. It's it, like, does this yeah. feel resonant with what some so similar to what you went through, right? Like yeah. people see you in a certain way, you're writing this book I, and not knowing your financials or anything like that. It was that feeling of what the fuck, why does my, and then yeah. I kept thinking about what one of my former mentors used to say, she would say, your bank account is a reflection of your mindset. I go, I thought I had a great mindset. I thought it I it was okay. What are you talking about? You, you know what it was? And and I don't know. So I would love to hear if this yeah. is what it was for you. But for me, it was, this was a lot of visibility. I had a lot of, eyeball, a lot of eyeballs on me. I had a le new level of respect that I had never, I hadn't received before from people. People yeah. started treating me differently. And considering I have the belittler voice, who's always telling me what a fuck up I am. This was like, whoa, I, I had a keynote in front of 450 people that same month. Yeah. And... I don't think my nervous system could handle feeling that amazing. And I was like, did yeah. I, did I manifest yes. the ne negative 365? How did I let, I'm not in the I, negative anymore, I, but I want to know how that happened. How did that? Yes. So I think it was, it was definitely not being able to be with the sensation. Um, but I'd love yeah. to hear your take on it in your life. What happened? I mean, yeah. Hey, yeah. To like the, it's, it's a, it's a tough lesson and it's often so in your blind spot that you just can't see it. 
And again, I believe that these things can happen to represent like you're not listening or you're not getting it yet and it's okay love you lots but i'm gonna really fucking get you to a place that you're gonna do the work so you can see it yeah right it's like what is gonna what is gonna get you to see the thing and for me the few things that really come into this one thing was why are you minimizing your power in the way that you are Mm -hmm. and can you receive even more pleasure and more love than you currently are? Like, how is your how is your receptivity with your business, and how are you relating to it? For me, I think that there was, um, you know, a lot of my core pattern with business and money that I'm really working on for mm-hmm. the first time, and I've also never done money work. I've always had a fairly easy mm-hmm. time getting clients. And this is Same. the first time in my, in like eight years that I haven't had that. So, yep. you know, it's, it's time I've done the relationship work. I've done a lot of self work. I've done a lot of work with my sexuality. I've done a lot of work with um, being seen, but money is something that I have not opened the door yet. So I'm excited to do it, mm-hmm. but you know, I was resisting it, resisting it. I thought, you know, ego, I thought that I was good at this. I thought this and that and resisting, resisting, resisting. Um, And also, like I was saying, was kind of like getting smaller as I was having less and less people and Mm -hmm. also just, you know, becoming more anxious. It's very, it's very real what happens when you get into a state of financial scarcity or you feel that scarcity. It's very real, the, the depth of emotion that you have to process and work through because it hits right up against all of your survival stuff. Like it's literally, money is literally survival and if you don't feel like you can exist the way that you need to you have to start pulling back and adjusting things and and it's okay but what I did was um you know I got a little bit like like I I didn't cheapen my my brand but I really like there was a lot that I was figuring out with how I was pivoting and what I was doing Mm -hmm. so I think that it was a timing thing and a processing thing Mm -hmm. but it was also like I needed to do more. And I, part of my pattern, like I was saying, was this like energetic resentment and like frustration with my business because it's, mm-hmm. it's for years and years. And I know this, I'm also a six, two projector, which mm-hmm. mean the six, two journey is like, until you're 30, you're fucking trial and error in it, girlfriend. Like, mm-hmm. don't let, don't expect anything to stay because mm-hmm. up until you're 30, it's like the first stage of the 6-2 journey as a projector on the human design I've learned about Mm -hmm. is going to be trial and error. And then you're going to be able to settle a little bit when you're 30. And then by the time you're 50, you're fucking fire, you know? Awesome. Cool. But you know, um, what I, what I did was really, you know, make myself smaller and make myself, you know, like allow the anxiety and allow the the thing to um you know i indulged in it quite a lot and it got to this place where i was just like oh i'm so resentful i'm so frustrated i'm so this i'm so that 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 became my whole experience and if you know anything about energetics Mm -hmm. it's that that is a representation of what is inside of me of of course it's a it feels like a justified response to the external stimulus but it always does right Mm -hmm are the way that we react when things are hard on the outside, it always feels like this justified response, Mm -hmm. but can you really look at that and ask yourself, is there a different way that I can go about relating to this? That's going to be more effective for me. And now that I've, you know, I I've seen that the thing that really helped me break through was just first and foremost, receiving from people and being open to getting help. It was really that like ego layer of letting go of any stories and narratives I had about myself for what this experience meant about me, right? It's very easy to, especially with all of the stuff online about like your bank accounts, a representation of this and that. And you can be like, oh my Fuck God, me. Jesus. what the hell? Like what, what? And then it can, you know, you get into the what's wrong with me vibe and like that is not helpful, but it is really rooted in an ego. But I was not receptive to help. Like I was looking for answers, but I wasn't like, okay, I surrender, God, universe, let, you know, you know, I'm open to receiving help from a place of like, surrendered, non egoic, open heartedness, 
and knowing that there are people out there um, and, you know, and whether it's like a therapist or a friend or whatever, I've had so many lovely people support me and just even asking like, hey, can I ask you a question about this? Or mm-hmm. are you open to, you know, having a conversation about this or like, hey, do you, you know, a couple of friends, we just set up like a free mastermind together and was like, mm-hmm. let's just support each other and let's do this and giving my love and giving my mm-hmm. um my time and energy to people. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to be generous and and open hearted with my love. And I know that that's going to be a part of me moving through this. So what I'm really working on embodying more Mm -hmm. and more now is like holding the standard for the level of work that I can do, Mm -hmm. um, refining my writing and my storytelling abilities to really Mm -hmm. speak into the thing that I'm here to serve with and here to do with. Mm -hmm. And being in more pleasure and gratitude and receptivity, like really receiving the abundance and working to release that pattern of resentment and frustration when it's not happening. I don't know what it is about how you speak, but your words just, they, they just kind of, they, they just, (laughs) I'm sitting here. I'm like, do I have a heartbeat? Because I can't, I'm like so calm right now. You know, it's so funny because for a lot of the year, I was like, do people not get what I'm saying? Like, I feel like it's pretty good. Listen, you are not for everybody. You're, you're, you and your words are definitely, are not, I mean, yeah, you're not, you're not for everybody, but I just, I feel the same about Alison Bird. I was telling Alison Bird that I was going to speak to you. She's like, tell Amanda, I said hi. Same thing I feel about Amanda. I have like no pulse right now, but I say that in the best (laughs) I'm so calm. I want to say thank you for, I want everyone listening to really hear this. So Amanda, you've been in business for how long? Seven, eight years. So seven, eight years, y'all. And just now you're really starting to look at money. I've been in business for 11. Just now, I've always like, I don't have to worry about money. Money comes so easily. I've never had to worry about money a day in my life. I've always been provided for. I don't have to worry about it. I don't, I, I used to get so annoyed watching people talk about money. Cause I'm like, too. I'd be I'm like, like oh, money is stuff online. That's so what you money manifestation. What, what are you talking about? Nervous system regulation around money. Y'all is just, and I, I thought I had it all figured out and oh my God, that oh, negative. Money. Yeah. The, yeah, so yeah, the way, nice the way that I've, re- check. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, the, the way that I've, you know, I look at, and I, by the way, I was, I was in the negative a few more times after me mm-hmm. and yeah. every it time just, it doesn't just end there so no it does not like, end right, a little bit nope it, it, it does eventually but it will eventually end but yeah, that's like the start right like that yeah. like the beginning of the journey not the end no and it, yes yes that is not the end and so the last time i was in the negative i can't wait what was the last time maybe like a month and a half ago i was in the negative yeah. and it didn't phase me and i don't mean that it didn't I like feel you i was like I was like, okay, it'll come back up. And I'm, yeah, I'm just trying that's to, it. that's it. It'll go I back up. Thing. Yeah. So I look at my account every day. I pay attention to what do I make this number mean about myself? What do I make that number mean about myself? You know, I, last week I had four grand in my account. Ooh, four grand. Oh, Vasavi, you're doing great. Vasavi, you're doing great. A month ago, before I had another chunk of money come in, I think I was down to like $36. Vasavi, get it together. You're 40 years old. How do you only have $36? This mean fucking... Oh, so 36 means you're going to be an asshole. 4,000 means you're going to be nice to yourself. Yes, so yes. this is what I'm paying attention that's, to. That's the thing. That's the thing Absolutely. right there. That's it. I can't believe that's I just it. said it. I can't believe I just shared this out loud. Yeah, you said it out loud. I did. You did the thing. Yeah. But I mean, just to, just to speak into what you just said, I, I have had a similar experience. So, you know, that moment where it's not the end, it's just the beginning. And that's the beginning of your work. You know, the next couple of months, whatever that work is for you is going to be you um, integrating that new identity. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to still have lessons that are going to come up along the way. It yeah. doesn't mean, you know, I don't necessarily believe it's, it's a test, but it really is like, you know, can, are you, are you going to work these tools that you have now versus now you just are aware and then it's all going to be fine. It's mm-hmm. more of like, can you work the tools? Can you actually embody them and practice them? And you're going to need some more playing ground to make sure that you remember and you don't, you know, get back into the, the, the other thing and, and it's okay. And you need to have love and compassion, but I really resonate with what you said because I have had a similar experience where you know, I'm not entirely out of the woods, but Mm -hmm. the level of regulation that I feel and peace that I feel with still not knowing what the next month is going to look like 
is amazing and it's going to just keep getting better and you know letting go of so much need to figure out the answer also was a level of releasing so much anxiety and so many voices that were you know were trying to protect mm -hmm. and it was really that inner work of like okay i see you anxiety i see the way that these patterns are trying to fix the problem but can i just be with myself can i allow what is happening in the present moment to just be and i know and what i've learned is that when my system is in a more regulated state i am more connected to my intuition and i'm more connected to being open and receptive to the next thing and the next thing is coming it's like trusting that is also a process mm -hmm. it's a it's a process of trusting god trusting your intuition trusting that everything is in fact working out mm -hmm. and it's a whole process to learn that but mm -hmm. now i feel in my body like it really is i want to say um yes when, when you said something before and i never touched on it but you said making oh, yeah. yourself smaller did you meet like, so I, I i didn't ask you this clarifying question did you yeah. purposely make yourself smaller or the situation forced you to become smaller and be with what was going on well both probably that's a good yeah. point like mm -hmm. you know i think that there is something that happens when you strip away a lot <laughs> of things and money when you have a lot of it it can be really easy to just be where you are right and to to keep expanding, to keep growing. But there's so much that I learned when things did strip away. And the smallness, like there were definitely unconscious patterns that I was playing into that in believing like people aren't really receiving what I'm saying or something isn't landing or whatever, then I would play into that a little bit more than I really needed to. And, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, maybe just make packages smaller or like not believe that it was possible for me to raise prices and all of that kind of stuff. So there was definitely a playing into it, but there's also, there was also a lot of power and learning and having things kind of taken away and having something be more simple and bare bones because another pattern that I found but that I do, there, there is like an overcomplication that I'm working through and not just, you know, what I say and how I say it. In my next level, it's simple. It's yeah. simple and powerful and not over explained. And I know that now and that I was in over explaining energy before. Also in my next level with business, my business models are simple. And I have had patterns of like, overdoing things and just I'm very mm. creative lots of ideas let me just do all of them and now I've really learned to be slower and more thoughtful and more intentional not to say that what I was doing was wrong but I know now that my next level is simple and thoughtful and you know really making something good it's like when you write a book it mm -hmm. takes two years at least mm -hmm. to make something so impactful be so good it takes time and it like i said it's not a quick sales page throw it up it's yep. you know maybe 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 that's that's there but i know that there's still things in my work that i've been integrating yeah. and once they land and once i let them land and give them the space to land then there will be more of like a takeoff moment but i trust that that's coming now right yeah so that's a great great point that you have no, I I, I really appreciate the the moments where I've had to be with the smallness of myself have been the most beautiful. They've been the hardest, but it's like, can I please just be nice to myself? Like I'm literally begging myself to be nice to myself, you know. And that's and so now um, I I <laughs> I said this the other day out loud. I was like, in this house we don't shame ourselves. I just said it out loud. I was standing in the middle of the kitchen. I fucking live by myself with my golden retriever. I'm like, in this house, we don't shame ourselves because I grew up with so much shame. Yeah. So I have to say that to like, I have to, I have to set the tone with myself, how we're going to start treating ourselves in this house and everywhere. Right. So I just want to say, um, before I ask you your last question, uh, what do you got going on? I know you have your book. How can people find you work with you? All that. Yes, beautiful. Um, okay. Book will be out next year in like May, so maybe we'll come on the podcast oh, again. Same, yes, you you will definitely be back on the oh, podcast. Yeah. Oh, my release date is May sixteenth. 
Oh, I think mine's also May 16th. Okay, great. Okay, great. Awesome. That's beautiful. Okay. I love this. Fuck yeah. We can Two days before, before my birthday. birthday. Oh, amazing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll let you know my publish date might be being pushed, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Okay. Um, very fun. Fun times. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there's that. You can find me on Instagram at Amanda Bucci. I have links to apply to work with me in my bio. I do different things. I love working with people long term and having a lot of space to go deep with people. Mm -hmm. I also love doing a, a deep dive VIP day or even like a month of Voxer coaching to move through a breakthrough. I love the, like the breakthrough, but also the process. So there's, yes. there's lots of spaces to reach out about that. Um, and what else? You can also go to Entrepreneurial Archetype, the Instagram. It's my second company. It's a mm -hmm. personality quiz for entrepreneurs. It's really an incredible tool to understand yourself and build your business more from a place of alignment. When I want to say this personally, having worked with you, I mean, I think that you understand, you feel the plight of the entrepreneur. How else do I say that? You the feel plight. the plight. You feel the plight of the, the entrepreneur. Angst. Angst yeah. It's, the Jesus Christ. It's the angst, the plight. It's like literally everything you've been running from your whole life all shows up when you run your own business. And you have such a way of uh, making, I know, I don't want to speak for everyone, but for myself, feeling seen, feeling safe and feeling um, okay, no matter where I am in this journey. Like some of the stuff that you've written, Amanda, has literally quelched my anxiety certain days when I was been feeling like, oh my God, boss, like negative 300, like I'm just, you know, and you'll post something yeah. and I'm like, oh, okay, so what can I learn here? All right, what's really going on here? It's not about the dollar amount, boss. And thank you, I, I think I want to name this episode about like rewiring for receptivity or something like that because yeah, that, you hit the nail on the head with the being able to receive from people. And um, sorry, I didn't close the loop on this, but I want to say okay. one of the things that you, when you talk about receiving from people, I, you know, a lot of my friends, they have a lot of money. A lot of my friends make a lot of money in their businesses. And I, and one of my closest girlfriends, um, and she's half Indian, she's half Filipino, half Indian, and she gets it, be, like what it's like to have this much pressure on us. But I told her where I was at in my bank account. And that was a huge step for me to tell my girlfriend who has a lot of money, hey, I have, and she just, she was it was a huge uh, growth for me to tell somebody that I respect and who has a lot of money and who's also half Indian. So yeah. I received from her that like she, obviously she didn't shame me or judge me. And so it was really healing for me to be able to talk about it. Yes. Absolutely. With someone who I respect and who's extremely successful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I did the same thing with, yeah. with um, someone that I, I hired, Victoria Washington. She's mm -hmm. so great. She's doing yes. so much great stuff around money and healing your ancestral lineage. And I just signed up for her membership program and I yeah. signed up for this other thing that she did. And I reached out and I was like, I'm really going through it. And I feel like you're one of the few people that I feel like is saying things that I think are going to help me. And I just, it was, a, it was a, it was a, a hard moment to be yeah. vulnerable in that way. So I think that if you can find that little thing inside of yourself or you allow yourself to be vulnerable in, in front of someone that you think could really help you, mm -hmm. then do it. I would imagine that person is probably open enough and would love to find a way to support someone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most people are, especially coaches and just people that really get it. Mm -hmm. People are, are very ready to support. Like they are just eager to, to help people in the specific way that they know how. And I think it's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Well, okay. Last question. Is there anything left unsaid inside of you that you have not said out loud that you want to lay it all out on the table, leave it on the table? I think I, I think I said some really like some stuff that I've been wanting to say here. Yeah. I'm excited to share everything yeah. from today. It just created a lot of extra space to have conversations that I've been wanting to have. So thank you so much for having me on. It was so wonderful. Thank you so much, Amanda, for being here on another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. Everyone listening, thank you for listening. Please head to the show notes to find Amanda, work with her, apply with her, um, and get ready because her book will be out around the same time as me. Thanks it's going to be great. Bundle time. Okay, great. Bundle. Anyway, <laughs> catch y'all next time on another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast.